Boys and girls, this is uh, chapter seven. It's called The Flying Train Committee. Interesting title, The Flying Train Committee. Here we go. Uh, in January, our class started a project on the city. Mrs. Haver, our teacher, divided us up into committees by where we live. That way we could work at home. My committee was me, Jimmy Fargo, and Sheila. Our topic was transportation. We decided to make my apartment the meeting place because I'm the only one of the three of us who, who's got his own bedroom. In a few weeks, each committee has to hand in a booklet, a poster, and be ready to give an oral report. The first day we got together after school, we bought a yellow poster board. Jimmy wanted a blue one, but Sheila talked him out of it. Yellow's much brighter color, she explained. Everything will show up on it. Blue is too dull. Sheila thinks she's smarter than Jimmy, than me and Jimmy put together just because she's a girl. So right away she told us she would be, she would be in charge of our booklet and me and Jimmy could do most of the poster as long as we check with her first to make sure she likes our ideas. We agreed since Sheila promised to do 10 pages of written work and we would only do five. After we bought the yellow poster board, we went to the library. We took out seven books on transportation. We wanted to learn all we could about speed, traffic congestion, and pollution. We arranged to meet on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons for the next two weeks. Our first few committee meetings turned out like this. We got to my place by 3.30, had a snack, then played with Zebra for another half hour. Sheila gave up on cooties when Fudge lost his front teeth but it still isn't much fun to have her hanging around. She's always complaining that she got stuck with the worst possible committee and that me and Jimmy fool more than we work. We only put up with her because we have no choice. Sheila and Jimmy have to be home for supper before 5.30. So at five o'clock, we start cleaning up. We keep our equipment under my bed in a shoebox. We have a set of magic markers, Elmer's glue, scotch tape, a really sharp pair of scissors, and a container of silver sparkle. Sheila carries our committee booklet back and forth with her. She doesn't trust us enough to leave it at my house. The poster board fits under my bed along with our supplies. We stack the library books on my desk. The reason I make sure we clean up good is that my mother told me if I left a mess, we'd have to find some place else to work. By our third meeting, I told Jimmy and Sheila that I'd figure out the solution of New York City's traffic problems. We have to get rid of the traffic, I said. There shouldn't be any cars or buses or taxis allowed in the city. What we really need is a citywide monorail system. That's too expensive, Sheila said. It sounds good, but it's not practical. I agree. I disagree, I told Sheila. It's very practical. Besides, getting rid of traffic, it'll get rid of all air pollution and it'll get people where, they go, where they're going a lot faster. But it's not practical, Peter, Sheila said again. It costs too much. I opened one of my books on transportation and read Sheila Poe. A monorail system is the hope of the future. <clears throat> I cleared my throat and looked up. But we can't write a report just about the monorail, Sheila said. We'll never be able to fill 20 written pages with that. We can write big, Jimmy suggested. No, Sheila said. I want a good mark on this project. Peter, you can write your five pages about the monorail system and how it works. Jimmy, you can write your five pages about pollution caused by transportation. And I'll write my 10 pages on the history of transportation in the city. Sheila folded her arms and smiled. Can I write big? Jimmy asked. I don't care how big you write, as long as you put your name on all your five pages, Sheila told him. That's not fair, Jimmy said. This is supposed to be a group project. Why should I have to put my name on my five pages? Then don't write big, Sheila shouted. Okay, okay, I'll write so small, Mrs. Haver will need a microscope to see the letters. Very funny, Sheila said, look, I told both of them. I think all our written work must be in the same handwriting. 
That's the only fair way. Otherwise, Mrs. Haver will know who did that, who did what, and it won't be a group project. Say, that's a good idea, Jimmy said. Which one of us has the best handwriting? Jimmy, me and Jimmy looked at Sheila. Well, I do have nice even script, Sheila said. But if I'm going to copy over your written work, you better give it to me by next Tuesday. Otherwise, I won't have enough time to do the job. And you two better get going on your poster. Sheila talked like she was the teacher and we were the kids. Me and Jimmy designed the whole poster ourselves. We used the pros and the cons of each kind of transportation. It was really clever. We divided a chart into land, sea, and air, and we planned an illustration for each with the airplane done in silver sparkle and the letters done in red and blue magic marker. We got halfway through the lettering that day. We also sketched in the ship, the plane, and the truck. When Sheila saw it, she asked, is that supposed to be a train? No, I told her, it's a truck. It doesn't look like one, she said. It will. Jimmy told her, when it's finished. I hope so, Sheila said, because right now it looks like a flying train. That's because the ground's not under it yet, Jimmy said. Yeah, I agreed. See, we've got to make it look like it's on the street. Right now, it does, not, it does kind of look like it's set up in space. So does the ship, Sheila said. Well, put some water, wa water lines under it. I told her, and some clouds around the plane, Sheila said. Listen, Jimmy hollered, did anybody ever tell you you're too bossy? The poster's ours, you do the booklet. Remember, that's the way you wanted it. See, there you go again, Sheila said. You keep forgetting this is a committee. We're supposed to work together. Working together doesn't mean you give the orders and we carry them out, Jimmy said. My feelings exactly, I thought. Sheila didn't answer Jimmy. She picked up her things, got her coat, and left. I hope she never comes back, Jimmy said. She'll be back, I told him. We're, co we're her committee. Jimmy laughed. We're all one happy committee. I put our poster under the bed, said goodnight to Jimmy, then washed up for supper. Goodbye to Jimmy. My mother was being pretty nice about our committee meetings. She arranged to have Fudge play at Ralph's apartment on Tuesdays and at Jenny's on Thursdays. Sam has a chicken pox, so he can't play at all. I was glad that next week would be our last committee meeting after school. I was sick of Sheila and I was getting sick of transportation. Besides, now that I knew a monorail system was the only way to save our city, I was getting upset that the mayor and all the other guys that run things at City Hall weren't doing anything about installing one. If I know what's the best method, method of city transportation, how come they don't know it? The next day, when I came home from school, I went into my bedroom. I see dribble like I always do. Fudge was in there, sitting on my bed. Why are you in my room? I asked. He smiled. You know you're not supposed to be in here. This is my room. Want to see? Fudge said. See what? Want to see? What? What are you talking about? I asked. He jumped off my bed and crawled underneath it. He came out with our poster. He held it up. See? He said, pretty. What did you do? I yelled. What did you do to our poster? It was covered all over with scribbles in every color magic marker. It was ruined. It was a mess and it was ruined. I was ready to kill Fudge. I grabbed my poster and ran to the kitchen to show it to my mother. I could hardly speak. Okay, so here are the questions for um, chapter seven, part one. The first one is, um, how would you describe Sheila? Okay, so describe her, and then give an example from the text to support it, okay? How would you describe her? She, uh, Sheila is, and describe her, and then give an example from a text. Number two, uh, which topic does the committee have to report on and how is the work divided among the members? Okay. Number three, what does Peter think is the best solution for New York's problem?
Number four, if you were Peter, how would you have reacted to Fudge's actions? What would your actions be? Okay, so um, these are already set up on the assignments tab. Um, if you want to print it out and answer them on a piece of paper, you can do that as well. Okay, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.